Okay, let's get back to our YouTube channel. There's a couple of more settings to look at, and then we'll we'll upload the video and talk about strategies. I often mention these settings because they they there's a lot of nuances to using YouTube effectively, and I'll be mentioning these these settings that I've uh, used before, and I think they're valuable. Um, we saw on the left video manager dashboard live streaming looking at community. On community is where you're going to see uh, any comments on your messages, on your videos. So you will be able to deal with people's negative comments. You can take them out. You can't do anything about thumbs up and thumbs down except show it or not. But if someone wrote some sort of weird or mean comment or off-topic comment, you can remove that. And that's going to be found here under community comments we're going to see that the default is that any person can write any comment on your video and you may not want that. You may instead want let me check the comment first to approve it. That is more work because now you're going to need to stay on top of who has been commenting on my on my videos and then approve it or delete it. But the good thing about that is that if you make comments be approved first they will come here first to the held for review tab and you can say okay that's a good one let it through that's a bad one ignore it or delete it to keep things on topic to keep things civil YouTube does an okay job of seeing what's spam so it'll be listed here and then you can delete it if you if you feel uh, it, you can reinstate it if you feel it wasn't spam or you can delete it if it was you see a spot here under community messages. You can send private messages back and forth to other YouTube users. They'll all be listed here. This is a way to have communication with other channels. Your list of subscribers will be here. So as people subscribe to your channel, they will be listed here. And what you can do with that is subscribe to them back or simply see what their videos are about. This stuff here about subtitles, don't worry about that yet. Community settings, let's take a look at community settings. Uh, again, to keep, um, to keep things civil or on topic, you can, you can ban users, you can hide their comments, you can approve them, it's all listed here. Um, if you're using these, if people are making a comment with these specific keywords, their, video, their comments will be held for review, so their comments won't show up automatically. These defaults, these settings that are here that are default are fine. These are saying that uh, anyone will be able to comment on your video, but some video, some YouTube users are are more popular or in some sense important than others. Would you like to be? Uh, would you like to feature some of these comments, like comments and messages from channels with more than 500 subscribers? So if someone is commenting on your post and they've got 500 subscribers, that's one measurement that YouTube makes that that channel is a big deal. Would you like to give sort of like preference to that comment as opposed to everyone else's comments that don't have so many? What is it's on by default, most likely? If you turn it off, it doesn't make anything bad. It's just that those users with those subscribers will have preference. Yes, there are channels with more than 50,000 subscribers. Comments and messages from highly engaged fans. Again, whatever the algorithm, whatever the YouTube uh, method that they've created, there are some uh, users that are more engaged, whatever that means. So their comments will take more precedence over everyone else's. Everyone else's comments could be visible, yes, but these will be higher up on the, the list of comments. Do you want to focus on the comments and messages from your subscribers? That's off by default, but if you turn that on, whoever has subscribed to you will also get first choice that their comments show up first. Would you like to show popular comments first? You will be able to get thumbs up and thumbs down for your videos. 
and comments will be able to get thumbs up and thumbs down. So in theory, leaving this on means that the best comments go to the top. So if someone wrote some comment, some positive comment on your post and it's fun or funny, and other people then give that a thumbs up, that's pushing their comment higher. When positive comments are higher, more positive comments come through. Positivity breeds positivity. But the other side of it is also true. Negativity breeds negativity. So if you're getting a lot of negative comments, you might be getting more negative comments just because of group mentality for positive or negative. So any of these settings, it's up to you to decide what you like, but the defaults are fine. Default settings. I think yours is set to all allow all, and again, I've used this channel before. This is the one that I recommend to put hold all comments review. Anyone can comment on your video, but it will not be shown until you approve it. And that's the one I recommend to keep things civil, on topic, to keep a good environment. Same thing for your channel here. I also recommend, yes, people can comment, but don't show it until I approve it. And all of these things will be held for moderation under the community comments section here. Creator credits, uh, don't, really, don't worry about that just yet. If you made any changes here, remember to click Save. Under Community Credits, uh, I'm going to skip it, but just to say that other people can, uh, you can approve that other people have contributed to your video. Again, that doesn't happen automatically, you approve it all, but the point of that is, let's say I am an aspiring filmmaker, and I'm uploading my YouTube videos here. I want to get you know, a scholarship to a film school. So I have other people helping me. I have the actor that was in the camera. Uh, I have the person managing the camera. I was the director and the editor and all of that, but someone held the camera and someone was an actor. They could take credit that they were in my video. I have to approve that. So again, this doesn't really apply to most of us. You're probably going to make your own video. You're the only creative team behind it, so don't worry about credits yet. Let's look at the channels setting. There's a lot of these items here to look at. The very first thing, at some point, you don't have to do it now, but at some point, you should go through the process to verify your account. That I believe it'll ask you to confirm your email and other things. If you do that, you'll get more features. This test account of mine is not verified, so it might be different than yours. But if you do verify, we'll see what that entails. You don't have to do it now because it takes a few steps. But I've got community guidelines, good standing. If you broke the rules of YouTube, which are available down on the help section, you could get strikes against you. Too many strikes, your channel is shut down temporarily or permanently. This channel is in good standing, you want to keep it there. Basically don't upload, you know, uh, videos that break copyright rules is the biggest thing. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me is that YouTube cares more about that you uploaded an unauthorized song rather than a video of extreme violence. So they, it's more about the copyrights and such, and that's how you stay in good standing. Are there any copyright claims against your videos? We will see that really if you make any sort of video, you don't simply want to take a song, your favorite song, and put it onto the video. That's a copyright violation. It's intellectual property. property. Someone owns the song. Even if you bought the CD and you own the song, you only own it to play it back, not to use it on a video for commercial or non-commercial purposes. Yes? Now, if you have a, if you have a, uh, say, audio, uh, say a movie, uh, I mean, uh, uh, some music from somebody like Criminal School, um, how does Google know that that's a legitimate you know, audio? Every time you upload something to YouTube, it begins to analyze it. And YouTube's computers are very powerful because they're powered by Google. Mm -hmm. And um, they're analyzing every single video uploaded, and it's really smart about realizing if it's copyrighted or not. It has a huge database of what's allowed and what's not. Okay. So it'll know right away if they you upload it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> under features here, if I went through the process of verification, I could then go through the process of monetization. Monetization then is how I make money off of my YouTube videos. Again, I won't go through this process, but you can explore it on your own. And this will ask you to verify various things. It'll ask you to create a, an account where they can deposit money for you, and you'll start to collect money for various factors. Uh, I, again, I don't want to. I, show, I told, told you both extremes that there's some people that make thousands, millions of dollars off YouTube, and there's people like me that I made ten dollars a month off of YouTube, and there's more commonly people that make you know ten cents a month off YouTube. Uh, so it's a huge range, and there's there's uh, guidelines that they will give you, and there's a whole black box about it. How does that actually work? But it's basically now you're if you choose monetizations, you're going to put ads on your videos. You don't really have a say on what ads appear there. You just say, show the ads or not. Show them at the beginning of my video or at the end or in the middle. The more you activate, so if I say, yeah, show ads at the beginning and end middle of my video, that's more potential for someone to click the ad because you make money when someone clicks the ad. Not simply that they watched all 30 seconds of it. The more active they are with an ad, the more you could profit from it. So you'll have to go through this process. It's not that difficult. It's a couple of hoops and then you'll have monetization. Your video can make you money. By default, your videos can be up to 15 minutes long. It's very easy to activate here, longer videos. Um, I've personally uploaded a three hour long video, and it took it. It's got you know a couple hundred views, surprisingly. Now they're not watching three hours straight. They're jumping from this point to that point to this point, and people have watched it. But I've seen videos here that are 24 hours long. You know, they have a uh, 24 hour long, uh, you know, sleep, uh, sleep aid videos. I want to go to sleep. I turn on this YouTube video. It's going to last for hours and hopefully it's going to help me go to sleep. You know, the sounds of waterfalls or birds chirping and all of that. Annotations, don't worry about that yet. Custom thumbnails. If you verify your account, you'll be able to do custom thumbnails. So you've seen that when you have a video, every video has a thumbnail, and they can be viewed, a, they can be a couple different ways. Some of these thumbnails, for example, Future Proofing Explained, Microsoft Edge Explained, these are custom thumbnails in that they wrote the name of the video on the video. Some thumbnails are simply like a screenshot, like that right here, that doesn't look very good thumbnail. Like, I can't quite tell what that is there. Um, you know, some like that, you know, that's also, that's, that's a custom thumbnail, but it's not that good looking. I can't quite tell what's going on. These over here are much more, you know, cr uh, created and, and, and uh, customized. By default, Okay, like this one right here. This is just, these right here are just, from somewhere within the video, a random shot. The default is, when you upload a YouTube video, it's going to give you randomly somewhere near the beginning, somewhere near the end, or somewhere in the middle. Pick one of those three. And it may be, they all may be awkward shots, like these. I don't think any of these look that great. The example video that I've uploaded here, that's my thumbnail. My eyes are closed. It's not the best video. But I don't have the option to upload a custom thumbnail. You can activate that pretty easily. After you verify, then you'll be able to add a custom thumbnail. And I would. I would take that little bit of space there to further entice people to click. This requires that you use some sort of software, some sort of editor like Photoshop or I don't know, iPhoto or whatever, to make a thumbnail to really show off your video. YouTube thumbnail tips. Think small but design at 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's HD quality. That's an HD photo. That size is big and widescreen, but I'm saying think small because your thumbnails will be shown at different sizes. 
This is a medium size here. If you're writing a lot of text on your thumbnail, it's going to get hard to read at this size. And you're going to see thumbnails that are even smaller. Let me see if I go look perhaps somewhere. So we'll look at here where on the side you're a little smaller too. This is getting a little hard to read. What does that say right there? Some of those words are blending together. The font is not so good. That's okay. That's readable somewhat. That's not. Besides, it's white text on a white background. That's always hard to read. Black text on a white background. Look at the thumbnails that, that look effective. They're often putting in some kind of text, big, and then some sort of picture. This is. These are pretty good examples here. Some are better than others. But one advice that I've, that I've noticed is if you add text, try to avoid the text putting it on the bottom right corner of the thumbnail. Why? On the bottom right not. They're putting an icon there. They're putting either the length of your video or a time uh, icon. Watch later. If you put video, if you put text on your thumbnail on that corner, it's going to get covered up. So think in terms of putting text on the left side, or at the top or in the center somewhere, because something will be covered up on the right side. Browsing some different thumbnails of hams. Text not in the right corner. That one's just a screenshot right out of the right out of the video. So is that. Some of these have more more work, like putting in their logo, which doesn't look that good. Notice how small that is there. We put. Um, text right in the middle of it. That one's fine. Kind of getting a bit hard to read. So that's why I think small. Because your thumbnail... So thumbnail will be shown at different sizes. Avoid text at bottom right. Something will cover it. <coughs> so you'll be able to do custom thumbnails once you verify. Another way to make money off of YouTube is via paid content. Once you've enabled monetization and you set this up, you will be able to charge for your YouTube videos. On that, I believe, you have to have 1,000 followers first, 1,000 subscribers. But that's another way to make money off your videos. Once you verify, you'll be able to file content ID appeals, and that means that if you upload a video with some copyrighted song, you can, you can, uh, you can try to fight it. Right now, I cannot. Uh, again, these YouTube scans your video, and if it finds abnormalities, worst case scenario is it does not let you uh, show your video. No, I mean, uh, minimal is that it doesn't let you show your video. Worst case scenario is that it deletes your video. So you can fight that with a content ID appeal after you verify. You're able to put unlisted and private videos, and we'll see when we upload. We have uh, a few types of videos. We've got public, we've got unlisted, and private. So anyone can find and view your video. Someone searches on, on, on YouTube, they can find your video. Someone has the link, they can view your video. So any, that's public. Anyone can watch your video. Unlisted. 
only people with the link can view your video. If someone searches through YouTube, they will not find your video. But if they've got the link, they will be able to see your video. In private, no one can see your video. Yes, yourself. Actually, on that one, you can specify individuals via email. Actually, you can show via email. Uh, it's very cumbersome. You have to, we'll see how, but you have to add the person's email to like an approved list of who can see this video. And you have to do it one email at a time. You cannot not upload a list of emails. So it's, it's not a good solution to share it to like all your friends and family quickly. You have to add John's email and Janet's email Juan's email and then individually send it and send it and send it. It's not that all of them can see it at once. So it's cumbersome. Is there a way to make the whole channel public with all those two different parties? Uh, is, is it just by individual videos? Usually the way I've done it is individual videos, but I'd have I'd have to look into it. Let's see here. Can I make my YouTube channel private? Yeah, it's possible. Well, here it says how to set how to quickly and easily set your videos to private or unlisted. So you can at once quickly make all your videos public or private, but I'm not sure if your whole channel can be done. I just kind of wonder if you're going to have some private videos or something, since I put them in a private channel, yeah. then it all be private. Live streaming, you have to enable it. You can look at that on your own. Video editor. We have a basic built-in video editor to YouTube, which we'll see. And it'll be reminiscent of Movie Maker or iMovie. Um, but it's not, in my opinion, very viable to use because you, you can only use Google Chrome to use the built-in video editor on YouTube and you have to first upload your videos to YouTube before you can edit them. The problem with that is we'll see that if we're uploading a 500 megabyte video, so that's like, you know, a 30 minute long video, that's going to take a while for you to upload. The thing about YouTube that is always our speed bump is uploading our videos. And usually in a business or a school, we have really good internet connections. So we're able to upload our videos very quickly. Most of us in a residential you know, situation, AT&T or Cox or, or Time Warner or whatever, they're all terrible for uploading. They're going to tell you our speeds are better than the rest, but they're not telling you our download speeds are great. They never tell you about the upload speeds. And almost every single one of these companies has terrible upload speeds. Uh, and I think they do it on purpose because that's how people share stolen content, uploading it. Uh, that's... Um, that's the thing. So my friend has a has uh, over on I think on Cox she has uh, 50 megabyte downloads. That's a really good download speed. Upload on a good day it's seven megabytes megabits. So it's much slower than the download. On the download that video is down in seconds. Uploading it it's gonna be minutes. And depending on the length, the longer the video, the bigger file size, the longer it's gonna take to upload. So I'm saying that in in that. I wouldn't use the video, the built-in video editor to YouTube because you've got to upload all the pieces of your videos first and then edit them. So the, the one that's on your computer, the one that's already installed on your computer, that's the one I'm going to recommend. Your videos are there, they're on your computer, there's your software on your computer, use that editor. The one up on YouTube is okay if you've already got them there, but that's the problem, getting them up to YouTube in the first place. And one more thing here, fan funding, another way to make money. You can have people sort of like donate to your channel. 
that one does not have any uh, requirements for number of subscribers. Uh, but on that, uh, this is becoming popular where people create content and they directly, they're direct, directly asking the fans, won't you donate a dollar or two or five or whatever you think is good and you can make some money off that way too. <clears throat> It links with um, YouTube's version of this, which is AdSense, and your money is held sort of like an escrow account of AdSense, and then when it when it reaches a threshold, then it deposits that money into your bank account directly. Yeah. Let's look at another setting here. Upload defaults. I was already working on this for a previous class, but under Upload Defaults, um, when you upload a video, do you want it to automatically be public, unlisted, or private? So here's how you can upload things so that they're always private, so that you don't accidentally show a video that you didn't intend to. Most likely you'll keep that on public. You can put your videos into categories. So there's not a lot of them, and it's kind of limited to, to various degrees. So which, which of these categories do your videos fit into? Let's say I'm this uh, Victor's Bakery and I'm going to be uploading videos about the various uh, recipes of our baked goods, which in your opinion would my videos fit into there? I don't see a category for food or restaurants, possibly how-to. You see, so these, so these are, are, are a bit... Um, uh, limiting, I think, to some degree. Uh, a common one is entertainment. If it doesn't quite fit into anything else, entertainment. License. Um, the, U the standard YouTube license uh, gives you some copyright protection to your video. So if someone steals your video and wants to do something else with it on YouTube, you have some recourse. But if you do Creative Commons, that's basically sort of saying, I'm putting my video up here for everyone to use, and they can use it however they want. They can download it, change it, take my voice out of it, put their logo onto it. It's a very, very open type of license. Most of you probably are, will be f just fine with the standard license. We'll see a little bit later when we upload a video, we'll have the ability to give it a title, a description, and add tags, keywords. If you're always using the same sorts of words in your title, you can fill them in here and then fill them in specifically when you upload the video. Most likely every video will be hand will be a little different, so I'm going to usually handcraft my title. What I do want to do is always have a have a link to my website in my description. I don't want to forget to put a, a link to my website on the description so I can put it here. This will be added automatically and then I can further add more description when I get to that. Tags are keywords. If I'm constantly uploading certain kinds of videos with certain keywords, I can put them here. And those are the keywords that when people go up here to search on YouTube, they look up how to bake a pie. So any of these that I'm that I'm uh, searching for, maybe I'm going to be doing how-to videos all the time. So I can have the keyword how-to. <coughs> comments and rankings allow comments all. So you can say no comments on my videos. <coughs> Stay out of trouble that way, perhaps. But Usually when I talk about social media, when I teach social media, and when I do this for a client, usually I teach that you should work things as a dialogue rather than a monologue, meaning let other people also comment and have a back and forth discussion. So I recommend to le let people comment, but then I highly recommend to change that to approved. Comments will not appear until they're approved, until you approve them. And those comments will all be stored in the community screen until you approve them.
Would you like people to be able to thumbs up or thumbs down comments? Yes or no? I think that's useful because then the good comments rise to the top. Would you like people to view the ratings on your video? Would you like to show people those thumbs ups and thumbs downs? Well, again, if you've got a lot of thumbs down on the video, maybe don't show that. That's up to you. There's no good and bad about it, but that's what that's about. What language are you usually uploading your videos in? So uh, English is the default, but let's say you're, you're often uploading videos in Tamil. So I'll select that language, and Tamil speakers will find my videos easier. So this about subtitles. Uh, you've seen TV shows or movies where there are subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Sometimes um, that's useful for people because let's say you've created a how-to video and they want to watch it but for whatever reason they don't have sound. Maybe that computer doesn't have speakers or the volume is off or they don't have headphones. So if you subtitle your videos, people can still read what you're saying and follow along. As a matter of fact, I just watched a German video the other day. I don't speak German, but someone wrote in English a few subtitles and I understood what the video was about. I was trying to take apart a laptop. I couldn't find that on the official website, so I looked up how to disassemble the HP whatever, and someone had made the video. It was in German but I could see what he was doing and on the bottom he had put English phrases of what he was saying and I was able to take apart the video. I mean the laptop. So what this is saying about subtitle, allow viewers to contribute subtitles. Let the community, let the people help me translate the video. This has to be approved. If you turn this on, you will get over here under the community screen. You have a new subtitle subscription a new subtitle edition, and then you approve it or not. Be careful about that, of course, because if you don't speak the language and you're letting someone else subtitle it for you, who knows what they're putting? But this will not show up until you approve it. This caption certification is always a weird one, but usually the very first option will be the one you want. This content is never aired on television. So captions are a form of intellectual property, and here you're saying, I'm uploading my YouTube video, it's captioned, but these captions have never appeared on U.S. television. That's going to be the case for 99% of us. And then there's these other ones that they are pretty uncommon, so I wouldn't worry about them. When you upload your videos, YouTube will scan your video and then it'll also say, well, your video is a little shaky. Would you allow us, would you allow us to apply a, a non-shake filter? Um, so it'll give you suggestions. Video location. Uh, if people are searching for a location and your video has a location attached, that's more possibility that your video could be found. So if I put in here San Diego, I recorded this video in San Diego, or it's about San Diego, and people are searching San Diego, even if I don't use the keyword San Diego throughout my video, mine could be found because it's attached to a location. pretty smart. So here I, I searched for our campus. Well, I guess not. Just showed San Diego. And the, you can attach a you can attach a location. Make stats on the watch page publicly visible. So that's similar to the one up here, uh, wherever we saw that at. Um, would you like to show the, the the number of views and all of that to your about your videos? Would you like to show that or not? If you're not getting any traffic to your videos, maybe you don't want to show that. And once you start to get traffic, then show it because popularity breeds popularity. 
and lack of popularity breeds lack of popularity. So if you have zero video, zero views, people might not watch them because they say, well, no one's watching this. Why would I watch it? I only have so many, so much time in the day. If you make any changes to this screen, remember at the top right corner, click Save. We'll look at Featured Content. We can't do very much here. We don't have a video yet. But under Featured Content, what we've got here is, let's say you've got 10 videos. Which one video that you want to keep featuring? It's sort of like that Promote feature, but this is the free one. You've got 10 videos, and you want to keep showing a certain one over and over to people. They've watched one, and it'll say, why not watch this one? So you can feature that video. And you can create a channel ad. This one is for free. This one is a video. I believe it wants it to be up to 30 seconds, pretty short. So you, it's, it's like a little ad. Choose a video that could be selected as one, to, one of a few to be promoted to viewers. So this one is a way to get some promotion. It's got some limitations. It doesn't have as much reach as the paid promotion. This could be another way to get more views for your videos. So, so that means somebody will use your video in, on their channel in an ad format? What, what, is, what is that? I'm not sure if I understand that. Basically, any of these videos and promoted stuff YouTube is going to put the video on another video. It's going to use its algorithm to say, okay, this is a video about technology. Let's put this video on another video about technology. So it'll try to show your video to more people that might be interested. It's not that the person chooses it. In this case, YouTube puts it where it thinks it'll work. But the one that's most effective is when you pay to show your videos more. So there's no reason not to see Exactly. You just need to have created a video that's, I think, maximum 30 seconds, like an ad. We want you to, uh, I guess it wants you to upload something. Yeah, we haven't uploaded yet. Yeah, you want to check that on, and then it'll ask you to upload, and if you've got a 30-second video, then you can use it. So then the next setting under branding, this is to add a watermark. If you do this, you'll add sort of like a little graphic to the corner. Let's see if I can pull one up. I'm just going to go random and look at something. See these ads? If I click on that ad, they'd get a little money off of that. Maybe I do want to find out more about Memphis Pit Barbecue Ribs. So they try to put ads that make sense for the for the video. So I'm not seeing it in this case, but, uh, but sometimes you see on the bottom right corner a little logo of the company. Oh, there's one right there. Okay, so this video is playing, and on the bottom right corner, there's a little logo. That is an active link. That's valuable because any video on YouTube, by default, can be shared on someone else's website. So let's say some other financial website writes an article and wants to show a video on that topic. They come and find this video, they share it on their, on their site, and then this logo is there, and then the person can click and it takes them back to this channel. So that's the watermark here. So you, you create a watermark and upload it? So yes. You, you create a little square graphic, it says make it transparent. You know, make your graphic nothing in the background. Notice that's what this one is. It doesn't have like a white background to distract. It's just the logo. So it says create a graphic, no background color, just transparent. And it says for best results use transparency and just one color. 
So if, you're, if your logo is a bunch of different colors, it may not be very, uh, very nice to look at. And the purpose of that is branding. If your video ends up on someone else's website, you've got some branding to guide people back to your website, back to your YouTube. That's another thing that's free, and I would recommend to do it. Advanced. Um, if you want to change the name of your channel or your icon, you can do that here under Advanced. What's the country you are trying to target? So whatever makes sense. What are some keywords about your channel that will help you get found? This will be recipes, um, cooking, whatever. Would you like to show ads? Disable interspace ads. I would leave that alone uh, because interspace ads is the fancy way of saying ads that people want to see. If someone is searching videos about how to learn Python, on YouTube, you're going to get a lot of videos regarding technology. If you turn this on, it won't show as easily related content. So it's going to show a baking video next to a programming video, which might not really help. So by leaving this off, the right kinds of videos should show up together. If you're going to be collecting money, if you're doing monetization, you'll have to go through the process. Oh, sorry, this is AdWords, not AdSense. AdWords is if you want to be able to do this promotion of videos, of paying for your video to be viewed more. You could be spending, you know, ten dollars to get a thousand views for your video, and that could result in, you know, fifteen dollars off of that. Who knows? That requires a setup of AdWords. Channel recommendations. The default here is fine. I recommend this is the one that you want. Allow my channel to appear in other channels recommendations. So I want a little bit of free advertising from another channel. If I turn this off, I have to do more work for my own channel to be viewed by more people. Let YouTube help me to show my videos on other people's videos. Do you want to show that you've got zero subscribers? Do you want to show that you've got two subscribers? That's up to you. But again, popularity breeds popularity and the opposite. So maybe when you have no subscribers, hide that. And as you get two or three or so, then show it. And if you've got Google Analytics, you can attach your Google Analytics code here so that um, Google can tell you many more stats, like where did the traffic come from, uh, all of that analytics stuff. I'm going to save that. We'll take a quick look at analytics because you probably don't have anything here, but this is the screen that's going to tell you all of these stats. I'm not going to go into detail yet. We have nothing to show for it. This test channel that I made up um, less than a month ago for another class, it has some statistics. Six minutes have been viewed. I've uploaded a two minute long video and six minutes have been viewed. So one person can watch one minute, one person can watch it over and over and increase these values. Out of the, the video that I uploaded in about a minute and a half, people are mostly watching 26 seconds of it. <coughs> so short attention spans. 13 views and on another screen, because there's a lot of detail on another screen, it'll tell you the exact days, which was your mo which were your most popular days. How many likes have you gotten on all of your videos? Any dislikes? Any comments? Any shares? Oh, that's nice. My video has been shared more than once. It's been added to a playlist. We'll get to playlists soon. But I haven't gotten any subscribers yet. And as you start to upload videos, it'll show you your top 10 videos for this time period. 
the last 28 days. If you've been on YouTube a while, you can make it show 90 days, a quarter, one year. And so my most popular video so far is the only video I've uploaded. And I've been getting traffic, a uh, good amount of traffic from Mexico, Switzerland, United States, Romania, and Sweden. Not enough data to show gen uh, gender breakdowns yet. And my traffic sources are that people have been searching on YouTube and finding my video. So just stats, and you can go into much more detail, show me where my subscribers are coming from and what devices they're using. People have mostly seen the, my videos on mobile phones, and then a computer, and a few on the TV, one on a TV and one on a tablet. So you won't have much to do here until you've uploaded content. The last screen we'll look at is Create. Go ahead and click Create. And here you've got a few, a few things. Uh, you've got, uh, let's skip down first to, to video editor. You got audio, video editor. I'm in Firefox, so I, I can't even use it. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. The video editor, you need Google Chrome. You need to have your videos uploaded. I've got a video that I can work with. But here's an editor. I can you know, go in and edit my video. I can't really do anything. I have the wrong browser. But again, this is a possible thing for you to use to edit your videos. I'm just going to go back. Instead, on Creator, if you look at Audio Library, this is how you solve the problem about your music. Because videos are often better and are more effective once they have some kind of music. But I'm telling you, don't go to your CD collection and get that song. Most likely you're breaking copyrights. YouTube gives you this screen full of thousands of music tracks that are free for you to use. Like, let's see this one. I haven't heard any of these. 64 Sundays. That would be great on my how-to video, how to bake a pie. Or I'm browsing around, okay, what about this one? So there's a bunch of music. Notice what you can do is, if you if you click a star at the at the end, you edit to your favorites. So you've got show me all the tracks, show me my favorites, show me all genres or focus. Let's say on uh, on uh, on rock tracks. So I go to rock. It'll organize itself. So here's some rock tracks. <laughs> Um, I can mix and match all of these filters, but let me put it back to to all. Um, I can do uh, mood, so give me some dramatic tracks. We can then go by instruments. Show me these types of instruments. Show me songs with this time. Well, what if I need a, a song, you know, short 30 seconds for my ad? There it is. What if I need one more than five minutes? There it is. I can also search here. If I want to search for something specific, um, I don't know, let's say, does anything come up with thanks? The word thanks. So you have different filters and you can search. Notice, uh, notice then on the track, you, you have the play button to hear it, the name, the, the length, the name of the song, and all of that stuff. Then you've got uh, a little ranking here, popularity. 
it doesn't tell you hard numbers but it tells you this is a popular song lots of people are downloading it it, it doesn't tell you is that mean a hundred people a thousand people ten thousand a million people it doesn't tell you how many people this may or may not matter to you I like that 64 Sundays I want to add it to my video just be aware that so did a lot of other people like it too your audio on your video may sound like someone else's that doesn't have to be necessarily bad it's a popular song but if you would rather instead have uncommon songs unfortunately there's no way for you to filter popularity I wish they would do that because I personally would rather use songs that are less common I want to be more unique and notice these that it's showing me right away are pretty popular because they're the first ones like Funko Rama seems to be pretty popular. And there's thousands of tracks here. Next, the icon is to download it. You then download it into a standard MP3 file, and then you can open it in Movie Maker or iMovie and add it to your video. Just like the example that I gave you here. This is one that in the other class we created this together. I gave everyone the bits and pieces and we created it. Hello everyone, this is Logan Chukwu for the song tech here. We added a sound to the background of this video. Here's my big recommendation for this. Do you see that some of these tracks have a little person icon. To me it looks like a men's room icon. There's a little person. I would avoid these tracks. All of these are okay for you to use. But the catch with these, if you open, if you click on any one of these, it says, you're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following in your description. So I must copy and paste this and put it into my video. That's not a big deal. Just copy and paste it and I'm done. I personally uh, avoid those because I've got enough to do and I'm gonna forget to put that in and if I don't put that in YouTube could take down my video I didn't follow the rules so to avoid that the last search filter change that to attribution not required and it will only show you songs that you don't have to give any credit at all it does cut down some of them, but in my case, I, I'm fine with that because then I don't want to give that give that credit. I'm, I forget it. I'm busy doing other stuff. So any of these I can use on my YouTube videos for. Uh, for for non-commercial or commercial endeavors any of these I can use to monetize my videos and make some money off of them and again this is a bigger discussion for another class but to edit your videos and add a little bit of background music this is often a much more professional type and uh, effective video So these are the various settings, a lot to really think about. Um, but once you've got these things set up, then it's not too big of a deal then to actually um, then use the channel. So uh, any questions so far? So if you select one of, your video, one of the audio tracks, it gets downloaded to your, to, your to your computer. So when you click that download, it's going to download right to your computer. Okay, let's take one more short break. When we come back, we'll upload the video and talk about all of that. Uh, so we'll only take a break until 8.30. So just a quick short six-minute video uh, break. I'm not going to kick you out. We'll be back at 8.30, and then we'll upload a video and talk all about those details.